Hello guys, in this video we are going to see the examples of uh, subspaces. So in the previous videos we have seen what is a vector space. So a vector space basically is a set of vectors where uh, this thing is true. So basically if you take any two vectors v1 and v2 from that set of vectors and you have the linear combination or if you just multiply the first with a and you multiply the second with some b where a and b come from a field f then the uh, result of this is v3 which also lies in the vector space or which also lies in the same space so this in mathematical terms is known as the vector space is closed under plus that is addition and scalar multiplication so here you are multiplying with a scalar a or b that comes from a field right so then further we saw uh, if we take a subset so uh, from this vector space if we take a subset of vectors uh, and this is the subset can this also be a vector space so can this also follow all these rules that we are uh, that we have right so that is what we call as a subspace so this subset of a vector space if it is a vector space then it will be known as a subspace so we will see some examples so before that what is a subspace so given a vector space so over here you can see an example so here the vector space is the set of all real numbers so r2 right r squared so basically a tuple a two tuple so a set of two real numbers this is the vector two dimensional uh, vector right so it has x and y where um, both x and y are real numbers and uh, we have a b that belongs to real numbers so this is about the field the field is real numbers so this two dimensional space becomes my vector space now and uh, we saw in the previous video that uh, if there is a line that passes through the center then uh, this line is actually a subspace so all the points that are lying on this line is a subspace this is itself a vector space right we can uh, always uh, check that so we have say take any two point x and y if you add both these points so uh, consider this line is x is equal to y uh, the line x is equal to y so uh, take a point y which is say a comma a that because this line is x comma x is equal to y so x coordinate is a and y coordinate is also a and you take some other point x that is having b comma b if you add both of them then you'll get uh, a plus b comma a plus b which will also lie on this line right so no matter you multiply this with a scalar you add both these vectors to anything you'll always be on this line you'll never go outside this line so hence this is a subspace this is what we saw in the previous video now let us see some more examples let us see if we can tweak these things and still uh, will we get a subspace or not okay so let us try a different line where this line is y is equal to x plus y so this line was y is equal to x that we just saw now say i have a line y is equal to x plus 5 okay so that does not pass through the center right so now can i call this as a subspace that is the question okay so uh, so one very simple reason is that it is not a subspace is that it does not have the zero vector so it is very important for every vector space to have the zero vector if it does not have the zero vector straight away it is not a subspace or it is not a vector space okay but if you want you can also see the other rule if you see uh, this is the line so if we take a point say a so if the x coordinate a a then y becomes a plus 5 similarly take a other point uh, where you have b and b plus 5 if you add these two points you'll see that the the result goes outside this line because the result will be a plus b and a plus b plus 10 so now this does not satisfy this equation right if you put a plus b over here you'll get a plus b plus 5 as y but here you are getting a plus b plus 10 right so this will go out of the line 
hence we can say that this is not a vector space or this is not a subspace okay so that is an important point so uh, by this you can come to a general conclusion that if you are in 2d if you are in r2 so if your vector space is r2 then any line passing through the center is a subspace any line passing through the center is a subspace all other lines are not a subspace these are just lines in this cannot be uh, called as subspace okay uh, so this is not a subspace now let us see another example now let us go to r3 let's see what happens with r3 so now we are in three dimensional space and now you have the vector is a three tuple x y z you you still have the field is the real numbers and let's see this question so say you have some x1 which is defined like this y plus x is equal to 1 oh, sorry x plus y is equal to 1 and z belongs to the real numbers okay so uh, basically this is this plane okay so so this is the plane if you want to visualize uh, this plane so it is very simple to visualize you can see x plus y is equal to 1 okay so this is the xy plane so if you see the top view so if you just see the xy plane so this is the xy plane okay this is the x axis this is the y axis so in in this plane it is just a line so that is this line x plus y is equal to 1 so if you put x is equal to 0 you get a point uh, over here sorry over here that is 0 comma 1 and if you put y is equal to 0 you get a point over here that is 1 comma 0 and then you just take a line so this is the line x plus y is equal to 1 now what the other thing that is given is z belongs to real number so z can take any values so if you see the z so this uh, above axis is the z axis right so this is the z axis so z can take any value so this then becomes a plane here you can see this is a plane right so you can see that this plane is not passing to the center so if, if you, you put, put 0, 0 comma 0 comma 0 uh, this equation is not satisfied actually this is not satisfied 0 plus 0 does not make 1 right so because of that this is not a subspace okay so so I just gave you this example to uh, sort of uh, continue the notion of the line so in a 3d space if you are in 3d if a plane passes or does not pass to the center then it is not a subspace okay on the other hand if you have this equation where uh, x2 is nothing but y minus x is equal to 0 so if y minus x is equal to 0 that means if if you see the top view so if you see the x y plane then it will be a line that is passing through the center and then z belongs to real numbers so if z belongs to real numbers that means all z can take any value any real value right so there's this plane uh, going towards infinity from all sides right so this plane now can be said as a subspace because uh, if you see it passes through the center so it has the zero vector and you can try this yourself you take any two points on this plane add them multiply it with a scalar that belongs to this field and uh, see the result all those points will always lie on this plane quite similar to the line example that we just discussed right so yeah so this is also a subspace okay so this one is a subspace this is not a subspace this is a subspace similarly if you see over here over here this is same but now i am also putting a rest restriction on z so where z is equal to zero so if you put a restriction over here so basically here i am saying uh, z can only be zero there will be an uh, equation like this x comma y comma 0 okay so if it is like this that means uh, you just have uh, one line so this is a line in 3d okay uh, so so it is basically this uh, this line okay uh, because z is 0 so what will happen is uh, you will just have this this line over here so it is a line in 3d basically okay so that is also a subspace because we have seen a line passing through the center is a subspace so here the vector space is a set of 
uh, matrices that are uh, n cross n, n cross n matrices, and a vector looks something like this in this space, right? Now uh, all these numbers belong to the real uh, real numbers. All these are real numbers, and the field is also real. Now we have to see whether a set of all rank one matrices are a vector space. Okay, so this is belonging. This is basically a subspace. So where our vectors is all matrix, all n cross n matrix, which we have seen is a vector space. All n cross n matrices are a vector space. Now out of that, I I remove all those matrices which are rank one. And we'll see if if it is a subspace or not. So for proving that it is very simple, just take an example. If it does not obey the laws of vector space, then it will not be a vector space. So let's take an example. So this is a rank one matrix. Now this is the other rank one matrix. If you add both these matrix, you get a rank two matrix, right? So now this is no longer a rank one matrix. So you see when you Take two points which belong to this space or this set rank one. You add them. You go out of this space. Now we, this is no longer rank one. This is rank two. Hence, this is not. A space. You get it. So if you want to prove anything, if you want to prove something is not a subspace, you can just prove it with an example. If you find any one example which is not obeying the these rules, then it is not a subspace. But to prove something. Space is difficult because to prove we have to see if all the conditions are met. We'll see that. Okay, so we'll see that here. So now this is a big question. Over here, what is given to you is you are given the two spaces S1 and S2. Okay, this is given to you as this. Okay, S1 and S2 are spaces. Now we have to find out whether S1 union S2 is this a subspace or is S1 intersection S2 a subspace? This is what we have to find out. So this is a good example. Fine. Okay. So let us go step by step. So let us go to this one. So S1 union S2. So again, just uh, simply take an example. So if you say take this example again, we are in R2. Say okay, we are in uh, the vector space is R2, and the vector looks like this, and the field is R. Again, the field is real numbers. So take uh, take a subspace. So now we have seen that a line passing through a center is a, uh, is a subspace. So this is this line was actually equal to y. Now take another subspace. So that is say this line x uh, y is equal to minus x. Okay. So now what does S one union S two says? S one union S two says all the points that are there on this line uh, or they are there on this line. So basically, this whole x is now our set, and we have to see whether this, uh, all these points, are they belonging to a subspace or not? Okay, very simple. You see, first is zero. Okay, so zero belongs uh, over here. I mean, so zero is there in the center. So one, first criteria is fulfilled. Now let us see the second criteria. So take two points from S1 union S2. So that take two points from this x so let's let let me take a point over here that is minus b comma b so why this is minus b comma b because this equation is like this so if you put x is uh, minus b the, you'll get a positive b and if you put uh, and over here this is x is equal to y so if you put a uh, x is equal to a then y is also become a right so you take this point and this point okay now if you add these two points you will get this point that is a minus b and a plus b now you can see that a minus b and a plus b will neither lie on this line nor it will lie on this line okay very simple example you can just plug in values so if say a is 2 so say this is 2 comma 2 and this is minus 10 comma 5 okay that is these points if you add both of them you will get minus 3 comma 7 now minus three comma seven will not lie on x is equal to y. Neither it will lie on x is equal to minus y. Right. So this will go outside the vector space, or it will go outside this x. So hence you can see that this is not a vector space. So this is not a subspace because 
you take any point two point and then add a, add them it is not uh, inside the set right so this is not a subscript right quite easy to see now let us see the other uh, other section so s1 intersection s2 if you see s1 intersection s2 that means uh, let us just consider the same example so that means the intersection that means the point should lie on both uh, this line and as well as this line which is this point over here the zero point so it is only zero uh, when x is equal to zero zero comma zero zero comma zero it is only that point that lies in the intersection okay and that actually follows right i mean so you have uh, the first condition met that is you should have zero and now because there is only one point you cannot actually add but what you can do is you can do a scalar multiplication so take any number from the field you multiply it with uh, with this vector and the result is again zero so this is also known as a trivial because it is not interesting it's just having a point but it is a subspace right so here we can understand this could be a subspace so by this example we can see that the intersection is actually giving you a subspace which in this case is trivial subspace so this could be a subspace let us see if uh, if we change the example we still get a subspace or not so let us now see uh, this example okay so over here uh, what we have is a uh, 3d uh, case so over here you see our vector space is r3 okay and the vector looks like this so we have a field that is same r and uh, we have two subspaces so let us consider this plane as one subspace the blue plane and the green plane as the other subspace we have just seen that if the planes pass through the center then uh, they are what we say they are subspaces right so this blue and green both planes pass to the center so they are subspaces and this line or basically the y axis becomes the uh, line of intersection okay. so this is the y axis which is s1 intersection s2 in this case and we have seen that um, a line that passes through the origin is also a subspace so over here y axis actually passes through the origin so the y axis is a subspace so from this example also we can see that if there are two subspaces s1 and s2 in this case s1 and s2 and if we just take the intersection of the two subspace it is indeed a subspace over here but still this is not the proof this is another example so now let us just mathematically prove that you have two subspaces s1 and s2 then their intersection will also be a subspace let us see that so we we will use a venn diagram for that so say this is my s1 and this is s2 okay quite simple uh, so s1 intersection s2 that means uh, this area right uh, this uh, intersection area according to venn, venn diagram now since both of them are subspaces both will contain a zero vector so s1 will contain a zero vector s2 will also contain a zero vector and so it will come inside this thing that is s1 intersection s2 right so the first criteria is fulfilled by s1 intersection s2 that a zero vector is present okay let us see the second criteria so for the second criteria what we'll have to do is we'll have to take x and y as two vectors right so take x and y as two vectors in this s1 intersection s2 right so that they lie over here okay now um, x and y actually lie in s1 right because actually they lie both in both the spaces so let us consider one at a time so it lies in s1 so since s1 is a subspace we are given with that so we know if x and y lie in s1 x plus y should also lie in s1 right suppose it lies over here suppose now with the same uh, same logical argument x and y also lies in s2 so if an s2 is also a subspace that is given so if x and y lies in s2 x plus y should also lie in s2 
quite simple. So now since x plus y is also in S1, x plus y is also in S2. So actually it will lie in the intersection, right? It will lie over here. Right. So you can see if you take two points in this intersection area, that is uh, S1 intersection S2, and you add both of them, you will still be in the intersection area. You will not go outside the intersection, right? Because both of the uh, because those points lie in both these subspaces, and if they lie in both the subspaces, their addition will also lie in both the subspaces. That means it will lie in the intersection. And this is the formal proof as to so both the conditions are met, and uh, hence we can say that if S1 and S2 are subspaces, then the intersection of the two subspaces will also be a subspace. Right. So, so that was so this is how we actually prove that a particular thing is a subspace or a vector space. To disprove is easy. You just can give an example. But to prove you have to fulfill all the conditions. So that is uh, how we prove it. So that's all. I hope you learned something from this video. And in the next video, we'll start with the linear combination. So I've been talking about linear combination. We will formally introduce uh, linear combination in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.